we go. Here we go. Ambulance, what's the address of the emergency? Police emergency. Go ahead, caller. Almost every second. Please. Listen carefully, I'm going to tell you how to do resuscitation. Of every single day. All right, come on, calm down. It's starting to get a bit tasty now, isn't it? Someone, somewhere. I need you to look at her vagina very carefully. You are. Dials 999. <gasps> it's a hell of a responsibility. He's got a knife in his back. You wouldn't be human, and you definitely wouldn't do this job if you weren't affected by cause. Just tell them in the background to calm down, farmer. Yeah, I'm going to get shot up. But what makes an emergency? I can't call a taxi for you, no. The definition keeps broadening. It's a bit embarrassing, I've just been having sex and something's just snapped. As Britain keeps changing. Get down to the ground! No! God's on fire! Again. Get the real place, the fake please! We see a different side because no one really calls us if they're happy. Do you want some water? Quick, quick! Get around here, sort her out! We follow the calls. He's going to kill me. As they are passed to police and paramedics. We're coming on an emergency response, so will be there very shortly. Right across Cheshire. Just want to make sure you're all right. There's nothing wrong. Right, bro. A county with a growing divide between the haves. Play football for Exxon. Play football for Exxon, please. And the have nots oh, is plain to see. You're taking the word of a rich man over the word of a poor man. This is life through the eyes of those we rely on to protect us from each other. Oh, I, I do hope you can catch them. And from ourselves. Pull your pants off and stop acting like a child. Why Sit down, kid. It's almost become some kind of Mad Max kind of society where it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. <laughs> Not a very good boyfriend if he slams your head against a brick wall, is he? I wish I could take it all back, but I can't. I wouldn't turn my back on someone when they want help. You know I'm here to help, don't you? <laughs> Please. Hi, my son's trying to break into my house. He's trying to kick my door down. In Cheshire. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're intimidating the all the time. Right. No, that's it. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Over 1,200 teenagers end up in police custody. Get the car now. Every single year. As I got up, I noticed I was bleeding from the face. And a surprising number... You need to get out of this silly behaviour. All that's going to happen is you're going to get locked up, aren't you? ...don't seem to care about the consequences. She hung up on me. She went, whatever, and then hung up on me. This is the attitude we're getting off now. With mums and dads struggling to cope. Please, come on, speak to my mum with you. Mate, we can't do that. Two, three. It's the emergency services. It'll be all right, don't worry. It'll be fine. Who are left playing parents. How are things going to be at home? I'm going to sort of hang out with me, Dad. OK. So how many are there? About 15 of them all hanging around the back of the, at the end of the alleyway. And they're throwing apples at people's houses now? Uh, they're throwing it at my house now. Are they? Yeah. How old? Uh, teenagers. It's more of them arriving now on bikes and things, so are they? it's only going to get worse, yeah. Has, has, any, has any damage been done to your house? Um, well, just the usual splatter of apples all over the windows and the cars and things, you know, but... It's intimidation, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's just, it's, it's disrespect, intimidation. More than a fifth of antisocial behaviour reported to Cheshire Police is now about problems with teenagers. Lots and lots of teenagers. They're trying to shout and they're bawling and they're running through the supermarket. So it's causing people a lot of distress, I imagine, is it? Yeah. I think people are a lot quicker to ring the police these days. People don't don't want to deal with it themselves because of the scared of the repercussions, because youths have got bad names. How old would you say these youths are? About 14. It's just a nightmare. It's difficult. Please. I've got 20 youths outside my house threatening me. They've been on my property pushing me about. OK. It's a disgrace. It's 11pm, 
Thursday evening in Warrington. Let's just get off my property and start swinging for me. I'm putting this on an emergency response, bear with me. Are you okay? Yeah. Shaking. PC Ruth Stott and two other units are immediately dispatched to the scene of the disturbance. What's the actual um, job? Some some youths congregating. Teenagers think they know everything. <laughs> and it's a recipe for disaster, really. I just think, well, I hope there's not too many of them for a start. <laughs> Be any of them, couldn't it? <laughs> right, right. Basically, something's happened, hasn't it? Somebody has swung a punch at the householder. So who is it that swung a punch at this guy? In the school holidays, if the parents go away, they'll organise a party and then they'll put it on Facebook and before you know it, they've got hundreds of people there. Why are you me? I record you. <laughs> you get bought on Facebook, bro. All I know is this has been a house party. Everyone's been drinking. How old are you? Yeah, 15. It's just personal. Yeah, yeah, right. How old are you? Uh, 15. This police officer is going to take you home. 15 year olds, you know, they, they, they think, you know, that you can't tell them what to do and they're old enough to know what they're doing and um, to do what they want and they don't need anybody to tell them what to do. What? You're under 16 for a start. You shouldn't be out on the street at 20 to midnight. You can't take them all home because um, you can't fit them all in your car and there's like, you know, 50 of them. Not doing anything wrong. They'll just move on somewhere else if you move them on. So, yeah, it's hard work. Because this makes me look bad. This makes me look bad. Just get on. No, because this makes me look bad. I'm not Get the car now. Right, no, you need to go. You need to go. Get in the car now. Right, carry on and I'll arrest you. Carry on and I'll arrest you. Drunk and disorderly, the lot of you, trust me, can come in. Right. I'm going to ask you nicely, go home, please. Well, go home. Why are you harassing us? Oh, why are we getting harassed? Why are we getting harassed? Walk away now. You don't need to shout. Why are you grabbing my hand? Right, that's it. What are you doing? Why are you fucking doing this? Fuck off. Calm down. Calm down. Is there any... They must think it's cool or something to act like that. And then, obviously, there's the bravado, especially when they're in a group. Look at this. Look at this. I'm 15. I'm 15. Dickhead. You're acting like an absolute child. They do use that kind of language sometimes, like bro and bruv and all that kind of thing. And you just think, who are you trying to be? You know, you're a 15-year-old kid from Warrington. So why didn't you tell us that you're taking us home? Because you wouldn't listen to me, you just shouted at me. If you told me you were taking him home, the top of me. I would have gone. I tried to, but you were too busy shouting at me. Do you ever listen? I was just waiting. Do you ever use your ears instead of your mouth? Oh, whatever. Whatever. While many are simply taken home to their parents, for some, an encounter with the police ends here. In police custody. Right, you ready? Let's do this. It's on the screen there, pal. Just up the bags of property you listen to. You've got your coat, your cap, 20 quid, your mobile phone with a broken screen, a key and your blue tap. Is that about it? 18 year old Ryan has been arrested on suspicion of assaulting a local takeaway worker. So I'm not going to be kept overnight and I'll I hope it's not. Okay. I'm not going to promise you're not going to be here overnight, but we will do our best to get you sorted tonight, all right? Right, just take a seat over there for me. So my first question to you is, uh, in as much detail as possible, tell me what your involvement was in the alleged assault on Nantwich Road crew. No comment. OK. Where were you on Friday the 21st of August at approximately 23.55 hours? No comment. Who were you with? No comment. Had you been drinking at all? No comment. Right, I'm going to start with a statement from the victim. He says, I was in the kitchen brushing and mopping the floors ready to close the shop. 
I heard banging on the front window and on hearing this went to see what it was. I saw a male and a female by the window. He is a small guy with a bit of a tan. He had dark coloured hair and he was wearing a black t-shirt, dark trackies and black shoes. Do you own those items of clothing? No comment. He says, uh, I was stood inside the shop asking the male things like, why are you doing this? The male just kept swearing at me, being abusive and trying to start a fight. No comment. The male then turns around and throws something towards me. This hit me on the left side of my face, causing me to blank out, and I fell to the floor. As I got up, I noticed I was bleeding from the face as I went to touch where it was hurting, and my finger went into the hole caused by the item that struck me. Did you realise you caused that damage? No comment. I think there's lots of different reactions, really. People who've probably not been in trouble before tend to be okay. To so some people, it's a lifestyle thing, isn't it? They've, they, it doesn't, the getting into trouble doesn't really bother them because they're used to it. An ambulance was called, and as this was happening, the male started throwing glass bottles at us. Can you remember that, Ryan? No comment. Ryan bastard he is. Nobody has the right or authority to assault me, and I wish to make an official complaint to Cheshire Police. I am happy to attend court if necessary. So do you recall any of that incident at all, right? No comment. OK. Next statement. I received a text message from a male I know to be Ryan Cartwright saying, how the fuck did I put your dad out, you fucking idiot, when he's the one coming out to me with a metal pole? Did you text that? No comment. OK. Grass is anyway ringing fed, Hughes. Must be pretty sick. It's all right, dick. Not my fault. Everyone tried starting on me. All I did was threw a grinder. And if you want to start something over that, be my fucking guest, lad. I got family too, you know. Luckily, with young people, it usually is on the phones, isn't it, these days? So there's those messages, and then there's this, these messages. Everything's on the phone, isn't it? If you write something down, then it's there forever. If you want beef, lad, you can have it. I don't give a fuck. And as soon as you've got that, then uh, you've, you've got them really, haven't you? I'll just stay knifed up, lad. I don't give a fuck about jail, lad. My life's shit as it is. Come at me, lad. Did you text that? No comment. Do you think it's acceptable behaviour to throw a grinder at someone? No comment. The time is now. 20.46, and the interview is now concluded. Got a lot of fucking evidence, haven't they, really? It's a few statements there, wasn't there? Uh, this lad was denying it. It is amazing. But he was a proper criminal, though. So you're going to be able to come back here on the 23rd of the 12th, 2015, at 12 o'clock midday, all right? Midday? Yeah. What, 12, 12 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, like lunchtime. Saturday. It was an aggressive attack. It was an unprovoked attack. You know, some young people, I, just, I don't think they think. Don't just not turn up, not say anything if you can't get here, because that'd just cause you loads of trouble, wouldn't it? I, I think if my son ever got arrested and was going to court, I would hope that he'd be feeling awful about it, really. There you go, mate. But for some young people, it, it's a drop in the ocean to them. Good morning, Trisha Police. How can I help? Hello, yes. I'd like to report antisocial behaviour. On a typical weekend, Cheshire Police will now respond to nearly 50 calls from residents concerned about unruly teenagers. There's a large group of males setting off fireworks, disturbing all the neighbours. Can you hear? Yes, I can. Did that give you the right to wake everybody up? It's shortly after 1am Sunday morning, and this time it falls to PC Nyas Waddington to try and restore the peace. I was in bed. Okay. Um, we were all in bed. Uh, and at one o'clock, 
there was this almighty bang. And right. It felt like something that had, had to be hit the conservatory windows or the roof or something like Is that. Is there any damage to your conservatory? I can't see. But okay. There was a group of lads that just started creating and letting off a lot of fireworks. Okay. I don't object to letting, letting off fireworks, hmm. but one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Number 37's been mentioned to us. Yes, it was 37. Right. Yeah, Lawrence. Did you get on with Lawrence? Not particularly. No. Yeah. All right. I'll knock on. If I get a reply on that, I'll come back and let you know what's yeah, okay. happening. Okay. It's not the first time. Thanks. All right, then. Okay, speak to you shortly. Uh, be this one. Hello, is it Lawrence? It's not me. Can you just ask him to come to the gate for me, please? When I joined up, it was all about um, catching the bad guys. I don't think um, I focused on news as such. Get inside, get inside, get inside, get inside. A spotty 16-year-old was weighed down the things on what I joined the job for. Why do you think I'm here? Noise, I imagine. Uh, Correct. I'm, I apologise, it's boys. It's not like I've attacked someone, it's bonfire night. I know it's probably a bit noisy, but... When was bonfire night? Well, it's the fifth, but it's, this is the bonfire night, really, isn't right, it? Right, it's now Saturday. the eighth, it's, it's the eighth now, isn't it? Yes. The man, I think three doors down, felt obviously threatened. So your parents have gone away for how long? Just the night. Just the night? I think I am the only youngish, quotation marks, person on the road. I know people in bed, but... <laughs> I feel it's not the end of the world. Right. Would really you have done what you have done tonight if your parents were here? Well, probably not. Why, why have, is that? Because well, I wouldn't have had one. Right. It's it's Saturday night. It's, it's Sunday. Saturday. Is it Sunday? Oh, Sunday, it's night, Sunday yeah. morning. Saturday night, in essence. Obviously, now when people get older, they sort of start to wind down. Stay in, stay in. When they were our age, they did the same thing. I think the older people who tend to ring in sort of forget that. Yeah. Come on, who's going? Please go. Yes. Did you regret anything as a teenager? Well, I don't really know. Um, I, mean, I certainly don't recall being uh, rumbuctured, uh, noisy. Um, um, and I certainly don't remember uh, waking up my neighbours at uh, one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. Are we going to get any more calls regarding well, fireworks going off? No, they're all leaving. Now. They are all leaving. So if they're going now, can I wait here till they go? I understand perfectly. All right, mate. I'll hang fire here then. Cheers. We all had fun, but we respected um, the rights of the neighbours to their peace and quiet. If you talk to the police, as long as you're respectful and you, you, make, you let them do their jobs, efficiently, then I think you'll be all right. Was it a good party? Good, good? Yeah? Would you recommend it? Would you come again? Oh, definitely. Dealing with teenagers now takes up more than 10% of Cheshire Police's time. Basically, all we're going to do is give them a tally off and just say, look, we know there's two sides, leave her alone, and then that'll be it. In crew, PC's Bryony Hancock and Charlotte Wilson are on their way to speak to a teenage girl who has been reported for engaging in online bullying. Personally, Facebook's fine by me. I like looking at people's photos and stuff on it, but as a thing, it's the most ridiculous thing that we have to deal with. Bullying obviously used to be playground stuff, then it'd be name calling, um, writing on walls and such like. Whereas now it's all on social media as well. And the problem with that is that it's not just between the bully and the victim. Everyone's on group chat or talking about it on Facebook or whatever. It's now 24 7. Is she here? What's she done? <laughs> you, can I come in? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. We've had a, a girl getting bullied. 
she's getting a bit worried now. They're getting Facebook messages. They're standing outside the address, outside the school, just staring at them, and they're saying things like, "Oh, we're going to find out where you live." We don't know if it's happened or not. No idea because we weren't there. So, are we all right? Letting if you have a word with her then, and just sort of say whether it's happened or not. We're not talking. I'm not, I'm not talking to her. Ding dong last night. Right. Have you got her mobile? Because I can give her a ring and have a chat with her anyway. Hi, my name's PC Hancock from Crew Police Station. It's nothing to worry about. Um, basically, we've had a, a girl saying that she's getting mither from you, and she has been doing over the last few weeks. Obviously, she's getting a bit worried now. She doesn't want to go college because people are standing outside waiting for her. She's getting Facebook messages. It's... Right. It's not her own fault. Yeah but, yeah, but you can't say that. You can't retaliate like this. It's her own fault. She, I'm not having it. It was, so it might not just be you, but what I'm saying is you're coming up nearly 18 like your parent, your mum's telling me here. You need to get out of this silly behaviour. All that's going to happen is you're going to get locked up, aren't you? All right, then, whatever. Tra. She's hung up on me. She went, whatever, and then hung up on me. This is the attitude we're getting off her now. <sighs> I'd smack her in the mouth. Well, these kids have got no respect for the yeah. thing, have they? I've got no respect for themselves. Never mind, I know now. If I ever said down to my mum, she'd whack me straight across the back of the leg. Oh, well, I'll tell you. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. She went, yeah, whatever. Beep. And hung up on me, and that's why I went, whatever. Gave me back. Oh, the respects they don't. When I was like 17, if someone said the police were on the phone, I would not be like, oh yeah, well, she's just as bad. No, you just don't, do you? I was like, oh, just let me get my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally don't, don't know. Hello, police emergency. My son's 15, like last night. We've yeah. been drinking and he's got a knife. So he's got a, like a massive carving knife out of the kitchen. He's kicking everything in there and he needs to get the police. He's going to stab someone. Cheshire police are now dealing with daily calls from parents, asking them to intervene because they can no longer control their own kids. Where is he at the moment? He's locked in the conservatory. He can't get out. But I think he's locked in the conservatory. Right, OK. Please. I've just been on the phone to you now about my grandson. Said to him, I can't live with him like he is. Right, and has he been aggressive? Yes, he is very aggressive. You're intimidating him all the time. Oh dear. Please. Hi, yeah, I've got my, uh, my son's trying to break into my house. He's trying to kick my door down. I've logged two incidents with the police earlier today, but he's back trying to kick the door down. PC's Billy Elliott and Chris Bache are the closest available officers to the mum's address. Where do you think what? He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. It's like a. It sounds like someone's trying to get into a house. Who's got two lots of officers that are already on the way, so they're going to be with you any time now, all right? How often do you go to a job where a parent has called the police to arrest their kid? A lot. So what's the other just? Trying to come out with. Yeah, and he's basically sort of trying to force his whole body weight into the door, saying, Give me my phone, give me some money, etc. etc. Oh, right, she's come. She's so not the living door, here, she's Although come you from can't me. really tell there's any damage when you shut it, it's like rattling. But then the lady from this house has come, across, come out across the road saying, He was swearing really loudly in front of my young children. I'll show you the door. Just have we go speak to his mum and just see where. Yeah. Is she in here? Is she? Yeah. I think he's not living here at the moment, is he? No. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. due, not due to his kind of behaviour here, he's not. Stay, stay here. Yeah, at the moment, he's trying to come down from legal hands. Oh, he's taking legal eyes and stuff, is he? Um, he's come back. Um, 
because he wanted to use my phone because he's no. social security fame it's not going to be today. Right, so he's on yeah, the socialism. He's but he's not allowed, well, he's well, not allowed well, to the house to hold it. You go. Yeah. We'll go and see if we can find him, okay? If he, if he comes back, obviously Layla's there on her own, so she'll shout us and we'll, we'll come back, all right? Okay. All right, let's, we'll go and see if yeah. we can find him. He sounds like a right little knob at this lad. We're just going to see if we can find him. Them doors aren't cheap, neither. No, they look quite expensive, though. The teenage suspect is believed to have gone to his girlfriend's brother's house. Okay. Something's clearly going wrong, isn't it? I mean... It's like she said, well, I kicked him out yesterday, but then I let him stay here last night. We had kicked him out then. And if it's that bad that in the morning you're saying to him, right, lock the door and leave, give me a key, then... I won't <laughs> let him stay in the van. No, that's it, isn't it? There he is, I can see him. Harrison. Hello. Come on, mate, you know, you know what's happened, don't you? Yeah, I kept my mum's door because she wouldn't let me in. You can't go around kicking people's doors, well, mate, can you? I kicked it three times, man. Otherwise, I'd just change your clothes. OK, well... It's all I want, it? Unfortunately, you've kicked your mum's door, your door and you've damaged it. I haven't. Well, she says you have. How? Apparently, I don't know, mate. Apparently, there's a bit of damage. How? Where? Door. I don't know. On the door somewhere. Well, and well I want to see this damage, mate, because there's no damage. Well, it doesn't work like I, that, I does it? literally what? I went... Let me in, and I walked, and right. she said, no, well, I'm ringing the police, and then that's listen, when I went. Listen, Harrison, listen, apparently... I haven't even been shouting, Harrison, listen, I can only go with what I've been told, can't I? Oh, I haven't even been shouting. Listen, listen, listen I can only go with what Sorry, I've been told. You're going to get locked up, mate. Why? Well, for allegation of damage and I've... shouting and swearing in the streets. I've not even sworn or shouted, pal. Harrison, listen, calm down, OK? I'll be fair with you, that's fine, but you need to be sensible. OK? Because if there's no sensible, it's going to be, you know... OK, I know you're upset and I know you're feeling a little bit aggrieved, but we can only deal with what we're told. As I said, we, we can only deal it with... It must be very, doing. very hard to report your own child. I can't think of any stage that it would get bad enough that my mum or my dad would phone the police. Please, can you come speak to my mum with you? No, 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 you can't do that, mate. Just with you? No, no, no. Harrison, listen, it has to be like this. Please. Mate, we can't do that, OK? Has it solved the issue? Has it not solved the issue? Has it made it better? Has it made it worse? We can't change the we process. We can't talk about it now. No, we can't, because you have to have, like, your rights and give your side of the story officially on tape, don't you? And you never really see what kind of impact it's had on the family. If you've not been back to the address, you would hope that situation sorted itself out. Can I just have a hug and a kiss? Because I'll go on remand, I will. What's what? I'm going to go on remand. Can I have a hug and a kiss from my girlfriend? Is your girlfriend in there? Yeah, I'm, go I'm going on remand Listen now. to me. I'll be fair with you. That's fine. But you need to be sensible. Are you going to be sensible? Can you please get in his head that I'm not going where you're from? Why is she, your girlfriend's... Why would she leave you, mate? Just because you're well, kicking yeah. the door. She's standing here hugging you in the rain. I'd say she loves you. <laughs> we try our best, but we're not social workers. Come on. No, we don't We don't want any babies made on the drive. Let's just go. It comes down to dysfunctional families. And we're, us, ourselves and the ambulance service, after five o'clock Monday to Friday, are life social workers. To be honest, I had a look, but I couldn't get in the gate because it was locked. And then he's obviously come out then because I, I thought I saw something moving. He's one of those that he tries to manipulate you and if he doesn't get his own way, he might have a paddy. He's missing? OK, and he's 15. There's usually no one in bed. He's not even coming for his team or anything. Though as a society, we have never been so afraid of teenagers, we have also never been more afraid for them. Have you found any of his friends' houses? Do you know I, any of the, the... I don't know any of them. I know you, I'm supposed to wait 24 hours or... No, not at all. No, it doesn't work like that. 999 call handlers now receive an average of 10 reports of missing children every single day. Hello, please. I've had a young lad that's running off the street. OK. Um, he is in a bit of a state. I get loads of missing children. And most of the time, you'll go, what's their name? And they'll go, blah, blah, blah. And you'll be like, oh. Yeah. Because you've heard of them before. 
and they'll be missing. There were some kids who get reported missing every day. He's literally shaking like a leaf and crying. But then there's sometimes the cases where parents might not tell us the whole story. Something could have gone on. It's difficult. Sometimes people don't want to be found. And is he giving you any details, giving you his name? Yeah. And there's certain calls that will stick in your mind and it'll make you even go home sometimes thinking, oh, I wonder, where, I wonder what's happened with that one. I hope that kid's all right. Delta Romeo 232 to be It's 2am, and in Warrington, mum of two, PC Rachel Parr and PC Mike Luckett, are on patrol. Just one second. Morning. Hi. Sorry, stand by. I'll just get out, if that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> You're walking down the street in what looks like your pyjamas yeah. and your blanket. Just stand on here yeah. for us. You've just been at your friend's house? Yeah. I know old are you? 16. Yeah. It's not good, is it? No. Your age. I don't really want you walking the streets. You're definitely not missing from home, are you? Oh, no, I'm going home now. I'll just do a quick check on you. Uh, this female is currently walking down uh, Parker Street in pyjamas. Uh, due to her age, we're going to have to take her home. We deal with kids that haven't been reported missing and we've just come across all the time. And we're talking every single shift we come across kids like that. Right, we'll have to get you home. Okay, that's fine. You think you're invincible as a kid, don't you? I remember doing it myself as a kid. You, you walk around and you think, what do you mean? Be careful. Of course I am. I'm, yeah, I'm fine. Were you not able to wait till the morning to walk home or something happened? Well, no, nothing's happened. I was just like, I'm just going home. Half two in the morning is probably yeah. not the best time of a girl your age to be. Walking home, all right. Yeah. They think they're, they're big and hard. They think they know what they're doing, but they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a, a clue the types of people that are, are knocking around. Oh, it's my nap. <laughs> <Is she laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't be doing stuff like this again. Yeah. It's not right, is it? No. Not for someone your age. Someone could easily take advantage of yeah. that. Hello. Here's the police with her. Yeah, I know they got you. I've not done anything. No, she's not done anything <laughs> wrong. Well, Basically, no, we've, we've found her walking the streets. She's on her way home. Obviously, we can't <coughs> leave... Oh, Molly. Molly. Let's move that down Molly. for us. Obviously, we can't leave a 16-year-old walking the streets. That's why we brought no, her home. That, but thanks. just... We've had a word, yeah, and she knows it's not right to be doing it, Molly. but just have a chat with her over it. All no, right. Okay. It's only as you get older you see the dangers. That could have easily gone so wrong, but you don't think that at the time. Ambulance, tell me exactly what's happened. Um, well... Like, my dad has had a stroke before, yep. and it looks like he's having another one. <clears throat> Tell me why you think it's a stroke. It's the early hours of Sunday morning. He, ca he can't move his left arm, he can't, he can't walk. Like, he, ca he can't get anywhere, though. Paramedic Stuart Beatty and his colleague James Astles are immediately dispatched to the teenager's address. Ask him to raise both arms above his head. Dad, raise both arms above your head. He wasn't able to raise his arms. Ask him to say the early bird catches the worm. Dad, can you say the early bird catches the worm? Uh, 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 he's having trouble saying it. OK, that's fine, thank you. 45-year-old having a stroke. My like dad, help is on its way. What's his name? Uh, Robert. Thank you, mind coming up to see me so far. Hello. Hello, Robert. What's made you ring the ambulance today? Mm, not my, yeah. my son. Your son? Yeah, I ran. Yeah. What was your concern? It, like, his, his speech is slurring and he can't walk. He's had all the symptoms that happened last time when he was in hospital. Oh, right. And he's had a stroke before, has yeah. he? 
So what's he normally like, your dad? He's independently mobile? Yeah. And his speech is normally yes, like right. yours is now? Um, As a teenager, I had quite a lot of uh, problems at home, so I was... My mum was quite poorly. Um, my dad died when I was a teenager. Um, so I had quite a, a lot of responsibilities. One, two, three, well done. Good man. It'll be all right, don't worry. It'll be fine. I understand how it's hard for some teenagers. Have a seat on there, buddy. What's your dad's name again? Robert. How much is he had to drink for? About two, three pints. Has he been out today? Yeah, just, just at the party, that was it. Um, All right. Mine's got to do With a stroke, there's clues that we look for. Um, with alcohol, you can see it. If I'm, on, if I'm honest with you, yeah. right, I suspect he's, he's drunk a lot more than what what he's, he's saying, and that's the cause of this. Um, there's nothing indicating to me that there's sign of a stroke. Yeah. We always, unfortunately, see where kids have had to grow up pretty quick. How old are you, bud? Nine. Rather than taking on the patterns of behaviour mum and dad display, you kind of hope that they carry on with their education or the friends at school and, and steer a different path. No, you, you yeah. listen, you're you're just pushing for an argument, no. right? No. I'm not engaging with you. He doesn't want to know personal stuff. If you can't speak to me in a civilised manner, don't bother. I hadn't drunk for three years. I had went out and I planned uh, so something just clicked. And I just had to drink. Because I don't know how many I had. I have right, fair enough. Let's leave it at that then. My son shouldn't have seen that. I didn't protect him that night. He protected me. His lad's only 17 and he's the responsible adult. Uh, right, let's pop him into a cubicle day. That should be free. So he was the parent that night, and I was the child, and that was hard. Hello. Was I perfect that night? D, yeah, sorry. No, I wasn't. But like I said, there's no such thing as a perfect parent, Lisa. Ambulance, tell me exactly what's happened. Uh, my son's thrown a glass bottle and my husband. Dad's bleeding out. Okay, is your son still nearby? Uh, no, he's run off. Is there any serious bleeding? Uh, well, yeah, it's all over his hands, it's all dripping on the floor. What's your name, please? Kyle. Kyle. He's been arrested on suspicion of Section 20 assault. There was a, had an argument with his dad at a home address. Um, he's thrown a bottle at the and it's hit his dad, causing a one inch cut to the head and a cut to the lip. Would you like us to get a solicitor for you? No, uh, just a joint mistake. Do you think it's hard being a parent nowadays? I think it's different. You know, you can look at the past with his rose-coloured spectacles, can't you? And think, oh, in my day, things were a lot better. Whether they are or not, who knows? Make your hands baby soft. Put it all round your hands. Never used hand cream before, so... I suppose when I was younger, it wasn't just your, your parents, it was everybody else's parents that disciplined you and brought you in line. So how old are you now? Nineteen. Nineteen. These days. We probably are dealing with more parents who relinquish responsibility for their children. I don't understand why, whether it's laziness, whether it's 
that they've been driven to distraction time and time again and they've run out of ideas on, on how to deal with it. Um, maybe it's their cry for help. So you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. I've got to explain the caution to you because I need to make sure that you understand it properly. And you're arrested on suspicion of assaulting your dad, Alan. Is that right? Yeah. Once we've got to that point where the police have been called, the question's got to be asked, is it appropriate? Is it necessary? Um, a lot of the time, probably not. He said that you've kicked off, so he's seen you pick up an empty Budweiser bottle out of the front garden. And then he said the next thing he knows is the bottle was flying. But sometimes, you know, the shock of actually going through the criminal justice system and landing themselves in court might have been the wake-up call they need. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you some um, pictures, OK? He's got an injury to the top of his head. These are of your dad's lip. And you can see, can't you, that he's got a cut to his top lip and he's got some steri gauze over the top of another cut. My dad just kept on telling me to get out. I went, no. So then we started fighting. And I went downstairs, he followed me, and I picked the bottle up, threw it towards him, hit the wall, and uh, smashed and cut his head. And how do you sort of feel about that? Dickhead. <laughs> I've spoken to your dad this morning and he's given me a statement. He tells me you've got ADHD and he says that at times you've got issues with your behaviour. He says that you haven't been taking your medication recently. No, I've been, I have been taking it, but I've not been taking it recently. I've been trying to get me size because I'm small. And how has that affected you then? Made me angry. Your dad says your behaviour's got even worse. He says your language is appalling, that you refuse to abide by any rules and you come and go as you please. Would you say that's fair? Yeah. He, want, he wants you to realise that what happened yeah, is, isn't acceptable. And that kind of behaviour isn't acceptable. Do you know what? A lot of the time, um, poor parenting is an issue. But sometimes the parents are trying everything that they can and, um, you know, they really struggle. A lot, a lot of the time we get, you know, um, parents who are just banging their head on a brick wall. Your dad said, there is no way on earth that I'm prepared to go to court and give evidence against my son. He wants you to see what's happened yeah. is wrong. Yeah, or it's scary. And the consequences of it, yeah. We've all been teenagers once, haven't we? And. I think most of us have been at a point in our lives, when, probably when we were teenagers, where we could have taken one turn or another. Do you think your dad was out of order when that happened? No, I am. You're out of order? You know, you can really mess it up, can't you? Are you going to go home? Yeah. OK, and what's, what, how are things going to be at home? I'm going to sort of hang out with my dad. You must be pretty relieved that your dad didn't want to press charges. Yeah. He could have, though. Do you want a drink or anything? Yeah, please. What do you want? Do you hope in time your relationship will get better with your dad? Yeah. Hope it, hope it will. <laughs> I do feel for the teenagers. You know, you just sort of try and push boundaries, don't you? And that's what teenagers are always doing. Do we need to give them a break occasionally? Um, not if they've done something wrong. <laughs> I'm going to ask you nicely. Go home, please. We'll go home. The teenagers accused of assaulting the homeowner were never charged. Got a lot of fucking evidence, aren't they, really? There's a few statements there, wasn't there? Ryan was found guilty of grievous bodily harm and sentenced to five months in prison. It's not like I've attacked someone, it's bonfire night. Lawrence hasn't had any more visits from the police. I understand the purpose. All right, mate. Whatever. Ta. She's not up on me, she went, whatever. The girl accused of cyberbullying wasn't charged. 
But if she does enter then, just come in. Just, stop, just that's stop. Oh, hell yeah. That's all I need. There have been no further complaints made against her. I'm not even sworn on shouting, pal. Harrison, listen, calm down. <sighs> OK. The charges of criminal damage and threatening an abusive behaviour against Harrison were dismissed at court. But he's currently in prison serving 52 weeks after being found guilty of three counts of assault against someone else. So what's he normally like, your dad? Independently more Robert's dad has been trying hard to control his drinking and Robert is now going back to college to finish his IT course. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you pictures. After Kyle's father decided not to press charges, there have been no further incidents between them since. <laughs>